boy is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another video update. It's the end of March, so it's time for a March update on our solar energy and uh, home energy usage. Really good month, lots to share with you. So I hope you watch along, hope you follow through to the end. So I'll do the stats first. Then I'll give you an update on the solar panels. We've got new solar panels that have gone in and uh, the scaffolding's down. They're now fully working. Very interesting with the shading that we've got, um, that it's shading one angle at one time and another um, part of the array at a different time of day. So um, there's a time lapse that I've done showing the two arrays together and showing the impact of the sun. Um, I'm trying to work out whether to put that time lapse at the end of this video or do it as a separate video. So um, I'll work out how long this video is and uh, decide then as to whether it goes at the end or uh, a separate video. Anyway, that's really worth watching because it shows the impact of uh, the shade and makes sense some of the numbers that we're getting from the new solar array. The new home storage battery, um, I've told you before that it's the Victron inverter that I'm using a 48 5000 so that's 5000 va of power capability 48 volt and uh, that is installed and working with pylon tech batteries i've got five us 3000 c batteries so that's about 17 and a half kilowatt hours of capacity so as i said it's sort of working sort of not i'll give you an update of that uh, towards the end of the video as well and what else is there? I'm sure there was something else. Yes, uh, my use of Home Assistant, uh, that's changed and improved as well. So I'd like to update you on that. Really not sure how much I can give you in this update video. I might have to do a separate install video. Um, so onwards and upwards, stats time. How have we done for the month of March? It really has been a cracker. Uh, there's been so much sunshine and uh, yeah, the extra ray has helped as well. Here we go. A rather incredible 861 kilowatt hours for the month of March. What you can see here on the day by day is that there's so many days here with over 20 kilowatt hours. I remember when we put the first array in, the 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels, we, we were getting 20 kilowatt hours on a good day in summer. Now in March, 20 is quite low, 30 is what we're looking forward to, and on some days, 40 plus. This was really working out quite well with these extra solar panels. So if we add in that 861 kilowatt hours to the chart showing all of our solar generation, we can see how impressive that is. Starting at the left hand side, that's when we just had the one array, then we added the second array, that's the orange, and now just in light blue, that's the extra solar panels. Not a huge amount extra this month because of those new solar panels. If we take out the new solar panels, then this is how it looks. So we can see that we would have generated around 750 kilowatt hours. We've got 113 kilowatt hours from the new array. So uh, yeah, very, very happy with the total generation we've got so far. So if we have a look at previous March values, we can see that March 2022 has outperformed any other March that we've had so far, just slightly more than March 2020 before we add in the new solar panels. So this is a good place to uh, remind people, especially if you're new to the channel, the first array, that's a Solus array of 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels. Uh, with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. The second array shown here in green, that's Solar Edge. It's a two kilowatt inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. And I've just added 2.9 kilowatts of solar panels on a 2.5 kilowatt Solus inverter. And that's showing in orange, but we're not getting anywhere near the capacity of that inverter or solar panels because of the shading. And as I said, watch the time lapse at the end of the video. It'll make more sense as to why we're not getting as many kilowatt hours from that array a bit disappointed with the Solus monitoring platform here because it's combined the two arrays together. I can't see them separately as easily as I would like. What this is showing is that the peak day in March this year was 33.7 kilowatt hours that we generated from the two Solus inverters. Last year in March, the peak day was 24.9. The year before that was 26.5 kilowatt hours. And 2019 was 25.2 kilowatt hours. So it's showing here that we had about eight and a half kilowatt hours extra from the second array that I've now installed. And for completeness, here's the chart from the Solar Edge app showing 273 kilowatt hours generated from our 2.4 kilowatt array that's connected to a Solar Edge inverter. 
and the previous year comparison chart, that's confirming what we said before, that it was a better month, it was a better March than we had in previous years. This is probably a good time to say, you know, why am I bouncing around different apps and different charts? Why can't I show it all in one place? And I, th I think I've tried to say that before, that all of these apps from all of these different inverters and different systems, they all have their flaws, they all have their benefits, and you could use this one. You could use the uh, My Energy chart showing how much solar we've had, what we've consumed, how much we've used from the grid, and how much we've exported. There's so many choices as to which app you use. This one here, this is from Home Assistant. I now find this visually quite an attractive chart. I like looking at this one. It's showing exactly the same thing as the My Energy chart. I've got solar generation there in orange we've got um, import in blue on the top and export back to the grid in purple at the bottom so it's which one do you want and sometimes it's also good to look at the different apps to confirm the data to ensure that it's true and accurate because sometimes you get problems with the system sometimes your ct clamps are in the wrong place or you've installed something and something's not quite working right and it's good to have data from different apps so you can see what's really going on with your system so yes if it looks a little bit confusing that's only because i'm showing you the wealth of data that we have available here and the different ways you can see it when you've got your own solar system and your own battery configuration you'll find which charts you prefer and you'll end up using those more than others at the moment I'm using home assistant more than the other apps but I didn't used to so things change the more apps you get the more data you get the more you get used to how you like to see the data and how you like to keep up to date with your system so as you might have saw from some of those charts, um, we had 190 kilowatt hours of energy imported from the grid shown here. In this chart, you can see it's a drop from the last few winter months. So as you'd expect, with more solar power, we're not having to use as much grid energy, but still 190 kilowatt hours. Why am I using so much? And it's because it's still cold. We're using heaters in the morning at cheap rate energy on the go tariff. And also I've heated the hot water a few times, again, using the cheap rate energy on the go tariff. But lastly, because we haven't got the battery fully installed yet, so that's why we're still using the grid. And with more solar energy like we've had this month, of course, we've given more back to the grid. So export has gone up quite a lot. When they get the battery fully working, then we'll be storing more of that and we won't be wasting as much. Cost-wise, on the Octopus Go tariff, that's cost us an amazing £24 and one pence, including the standard charge. And as you can see, if we were on the Agile tariff, that would have been £72.56. So really, really pleased with uh, our choices of tariff and how little it's costing us to heat the house, charge the car and run our lives on electricity. And the average cost there on the left-hand side, just 8.52 pence per kilowatt hour. So for comparison, in December 2021, that was £45.94 for the month. So we're almost half that level. January was 39.40 for the month. February, £31.62 and 279 kilowatt hours. And as you know, March was just 190 kilowatt hours for £24 and a penny. And a hot water, that was heated by the My Energy Eddy device, mostly from solar, just a few days where we imported on the cheap rate energy overnight. So 146.6 kilowatt hours in total for our hot water. We have not used that oil boiler to heat our hot water, as I said before. Right, the uh, Zappy, the Zappy was used to charge our new Mini Electric. Yes, we've got an EV again, thank goodness. That arrived the first week of March. It's mostly been charging on solar, but the first few days we got it, we did actually do a few grid chargers on cheap rate energy that's again why there was so much grid import wasn't there a couple of car chargers 179 kilowatt hours now with home assistant i'm keeping track of the mini so data is coming from my mini through the bmw drive app and then going uh, across the internet to my home assistant and i can keep track of the gom I keep track of the state of charge i can keep track of the miles the car's done and see it all in graphs which is actually really nice you can see how much um, range you you've used up and how much battery you've used up on each of the trips you take. So another great thing with the uh, Home Assistant app is I can monitor the energy usage of individual devices. So I've got the Eddy and the Zappy and all my CASA smart plugs here. And uh, if you add up all the heating ones, that's 304 kilowatt hours of heating for the month of March. Now that is a little bit surprising because it's been very sunny, it's been a little bit warmer, but the more energy you have, the more you like to use it. You don't like exporting. So we have had the house a lot warmer than, in, say, in months of December and January and February. It's been 
been really warm here because we've used the heating to use the solar energy. Comparison, the last two months for heating was 344 kilowatt hours and 394 kilowatt hours. If I click and hold any of those entities, it tells me the exact value for each one. So the breakdown, the individual breakdown is really fascinating. The most we've used this month was the Zappi, 152 kilowatt hours according to this. Uh, remember that's from solar, not the grid. Eddy Solar, that was 138 kilowatt hours it registered. The Lounge Radiator, that's the biggest heating appliance, 99 kilowatt hours for the month. Then the Hall, 73, a second Hall Radiator at 56. Um, a spare roaming plug that we use for all sorts of things, that was 30 kilowatt hours. The Zappi from the Grid, 26 kilowatt hours. Charlotte's radiator, just 26 kilowatt hours. No, we don't keep her really cold. She's actually been away a little of the time and is at college a lot of the time, so she doesn't have the radiator on that much. She's also got one of the sunniest rooms, so she actually complains she's got too much heat. So that's working out really economically. And the dehumidifier in our main bedroom, just 19 kilowatt hours for the month. And lastly, Eddie from the grid, just 7 kilowatt hours. Seen in some of my previous videos, I talked about these extra solar panels. Um, I was going to optimize them, but I worked out um, that the optimization would save some energy and give us a little bit more, but only at times when the panels weren't performing at the best anyway. So I didn't think that the benefits of the optimization were worth the hassles and the extra cost, especially going with Solar Edge with individual optimizers. There was also issues with the fewer number of panels that we had that the voltage wasn't getting up as well to uh, fire up the inverter. So they're working really, really well. Um, there's two strings. One's three panels on the garage. They're 380 watt panels and gets a little bit of shade, especially on that top panel. So that's the one that does get more shade than anything else. So those three don't light up until the shades disappeared off all three because they're all connected as a single string. The four panels on the gable, they're 450 watt panels each, but they're... Um, they're sectioned, aren't they? You can see that there's a line between them, so there's a top half and a bottom half. So if the top half is shaded, the bottom half is still going to be generating power. So I, I chose them for that reason as well, knowing that this shade would be creeping down the wall. So I'm getting good generation from them. Uh, eight and a half kilowatt hours is what I've seen at the most for a day for those panels so far. That should increase the more morning sun that we have and the higher the sun goes. We should get more time. Um, with sunlight on these panels but rather than the number of kilowatt hours we're getting I'm most pleased with the amount of power we're getting early in the morning and later in the afternoon so we do have a more flexible system now I am noticing already that it's much easier to heat our hot water we can charge the car a lot easier we're not waiting for other things there's so much power I've seen up to 7.4 kilowatts coming through in one go just for fleeting moments but uh, with that sort of power we can really do everything we can cook we can heat the hot water we can charge the car we can do everything at once so I am noticing that flexibility and that's what I wanted from adding more solar panels it's not about the kilowatt hours it's about the power and the flexibility of being able to use that power this is where I confess that these new solar panels are a little bit of a folly. They are an indulgence because I've paid just about as much for these seven solar panels as I did for the original 3.9 kilowatt solar array with 14 panels. So they're not very economical. The amount of kilowatt hours I'm getting from them don't justify the price I'm paying for them. But when your roof's full and you've only got less than optimal space to use, the question is, do you want to use it? For me, it's worth the money. Um, for other people that are looking for their payback and how long it takes and all those sort of things, this probably wasn't worth it. You are better off installing them on south facing roofs if you can it does cost more to install them on less optimal positions especially on gable walls it was the scaffolding really that caused the problems because there was scaffolding on the front and the side of the house we ended up paying at least a thousand pounds more for the scaffolding than we might have for other arrays so that was what wasn't really economical it was the installation costs so battery update then, here it is, this is the Victron VRM, this is the view that I have online of the battery system which also sees my PV inverters and it sees the AC loads and the grids and all those sort of things but that's the issue that I've got, it's not fully working yet because the grid meter, the thing that monitors the grid isn't working properly. I've cobbled it together here and uh, made the actual inverter work with the battery so that I've got it charging, I can charge it during the day on solar 
but it's not detecting how much solar and grid excess there is, so it's not going up and down. It's staying at a static charge level that I set. So this is one of the things that you might think is complex about the Victron inverter, that there's lots to it and lots of settings and lots of changes, but I see that as flexibility. I see that as it can be left on its own, it can just work as you want it to, but there's so much control and so much flexibility, I've been able to get this inverter working, even though it was left in a non-working state. Now, I know you can't do that with many other battery systems. You just don't have this level of granular control. So I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing so far, that I'm really getting to grips with it. And it is charging and discharging at the rates I expected. I think there was a little bit of a discussion before about 3.6 kilowatts continuous isn't what we should be getting, and we should be getting up to 4 kilowatts. But you have to remember, 3.6 kilowatts of charging is charging into the battery. So that's at 50 volts. It's not based on the 240 volts, etc. So if it's a 70 amp charger and 50 volt battery, that's 3.5 kilowatts. So 3.6 kilowatts peak is absolutely what I'm expecting. Now to deliver that 3.6 kilowatts of charging, it does take just over 4 kilowatts of AC power to do it. So that might be the confusion with some people, that they're looking at the power that from the grid to deliver that charging, whereas I'm looking at the charging that's actually going into the battery. What else is working with this? Um, the capacity is brilliant. Overnight we're only getting down to 85%, so we're only using 15% of the battery for our overnight grid uh, usage. I'm really pleased with that as well. And the big test was the oven test, so turning the oven on, watching the in-house display from Octopus Energy and seeing whether it detects that there's been any grid usage. And as I was hoping, None. This inverter, this battery system reacts, reacts instantly. There's no ramp up, no ramp down, and uh, that means I'm going to have less import and less export, so I'm really happy with that. I was a bit nervous, I'll confess. And I hope you've noticed by now the instant response time that you see in the VRM system. So the data coming from the battery, showing my PV values, the grid values, and the battery, is updating here every second, two seconds, three seconds max. It's almost instantaneous. Um, that is a really key feature that I wanted from this system, because the I, I watch the system a lot, so it's nice to see it react. It's a pain when you've got to wait a minute or five minutes for updates. So this was a key aspect as to why I chose this battery system. And this is my view of the battery data from Home Assistant. So I've implemented some Modbus inquiries. So Home Assistant is polling out to the Victron inverter directly here. It's not going out to the internet, not going to the VRM site. And it's collecting this data. The top row there, the absorb 10, 10 degrees, 52.3 volts, etc. Those are polled every 60 seconds. The row below, which are the actual data, you can see those refreshing live. Uh, I, I do refreshes on those every three seconds. So I've got a live instantaneous view as well um, from Home Assistant, and I can see how well it's charging. But uh, what you can also see down the bottom is the CASA smart plugs. So if I notice that there's some uh, export or we're using too much from the grid, I can turn on or off some of the devices that I've got as well, all from the single point. And then the middle row, that's a set point and DVCC, that's me ch changing the charging rate. So instead of charging at the full 70 amp capability, I can tune the system down so it only limits how much it can charge by, by 5 amps, 10 amps, 15, 20, 30, 40. So I've put switches in there to change those myself. So I can actually change the inverter. I haven't got to go to remote console, which is another feature of the uh, VRM application. I don't have to go and do that. I can do it all from Home Assistant. So the only problem with being so enthusiastic about these things is that I can go on about it for quite a long time and uh, this video is getting quite long so I think it's time that I end it here. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope there was something there for everyone. A uh, really good month. Hope you had a good month too. Don't forget to leave me your stats and uh, your system details in the comments below. If you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them. But as I said, th there are so many messages coming through now. I, I really think that I'm just not going to be able to get to everyone. So I apologize for that. But the channel's getting popular. And I guess that's a good thing. More people are realizing that solar's a good thing. Home storage batteries is a great thing. And electric cars too. So take care. Thank you again for watching, especially all the way through to the end. Really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care. See you again soon.
Bye for now. More videos later.